Coming up, Come Dine With Me goes where we've never gone before. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia. To find out if a clumsy cable guy, Boo Boo, will get a warm reception. Thumb sounder sick. <laughs> when we spend five days, Bring it on, Vancouver. With five West Coast foodies. Please shoot me now. Ah! Come dine with me, Vancouver. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. Trying to outwine. This is drink your effing face off, week. Outshine. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> and outdine. <laughs> this is good. For $1,000 in cash. <laughs> and the ultimate title of host with the most. It's do time. Cheers, Vancouver. There's no option about losing here. I've got four cats to feed. This week, we're in the country's third largest city, Vancouver, British Columbia, to prove that the left coast is right on. This is where it's at. We have everything. We got mountains, we got forests, we've got ocean, we've got wonderful cuisine. And they've also got 54-year-old West Coast Hawaiian shirted hippie, Sid Spencer. I'm gonna start my Westie up and everybody else is gonna choke on my fumes. Big talk for a cable guy. I can live with that. I've always been the talkative one. And the accident prone one. We got burns and we got singes. That looks more like a charm. Does the term rat's ass mean anything to you? As in I don't give a... <laughs> But if that were true, Sid probably wouldn't have bothered to handpick the seafood for his first course. Steamed mussels and double smoked salmon salad. I don't really like salmon. Then you can just have the mussels. I don't think I've ever tried a mussel, ever. Which means we found our picky person for the week in Night 4 host, Rachel Schatz. A 31-year-old plumber who's not afraid to pipe up. I've been trained to be bitchy. But Sid's the one trying to muscle out the competition. Oh, man, look at those. They're all nice and tight clothes. They are nice and tight clothes. That's a good thing, Sid. You want to look for that. So that way you can pretty much assure yourself nice that tight. it's a live muscle. I love a good muscle. That's one of my favorite things. But 26-year-old party boy <laughs> Nav Dillon, the host of Tomorrow Night, likes other things, too, like drinking to excess and being high and mighty. I'm very judgmental. And Sid is very optimistic if he thinks he's going to win $1,000 with a no-bake cheesecake. That's lame. Or would be if it wasn't made with Irish cream. So I poured a little bit too much in, and there's only one solution. And that's to drink the excess. Oh, there's going to be a liquor dessert. I could be down with that. Perfect. Perfect. Hmm. That's a word that describes wine snob and the host of the final night, Robin Yeager, to a T. I'm anal about everything that I do. Everything? <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. It has to be perfect. Duh. Dumb does not do well with me. I don't get along with dumb people. What about klutzes? Gelatin. Ah! The next step is my juggling routine. But first, the gelatin. There's centuries and centuries of people boiling down horses' hooves to make glue. And I guess this is one stage short of that. So... Yum. Sid whips up the cheesecake mixture on high, then stops to give it the old taste test. Oh, God. Something wrong? Uh, it's no good. I'll have to start again. Honestly? No. I cannot stand people that lie. Meet the host of Night 3, Alessandro Limangeli, a 44-year-old adrenaline junkie who's a walking cliche. I'm Italian. I'm in waste management. What more is there to say? Well, you could comment on Sid's chocolate crumb cookie crust. That's pretty simple, I'd say. But simple can be good, especially when it comes to Sid's Westham Island raspberry coulis. If I walked up to a woman who had this as a uh, cologne... What would happen? There'd be dirt on my tongue. I don't even know how to respond to that. You don't have to, because we're moving on to the main course. West Coast burgers with homemade chutney, Asian slaw, and corn on the cob. Wow. A burger? A burger. What's a West Coast burger? Well, West Coast burger to me says fish burger. Wrong. It's beef, or more specifically, rump roast. It's not a bad looking rump. Oh, really? It's funny how seldom that's been a successful line for me. Sid grinds the meat, mixes with breadcrumbs and spices, and sculpts it into a lump? <laughs> As a sculptor, I make an excellent cable guy. Give me a break. Come on. Yes, yeah, Sid, stop playing with your food. Welcome to Vancouver. I'm on Rec Beach. Wouldn't you like to be too? 
If you think Sid's wrecking his chances of winning, tweet us. Hashtag CDWMC. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, Sid. Just make your patties, will ya? That's my patty. I'll cry if I want to. I'm not worried about the competition. But what about the hat dress code? I might just wear my best mafia hat tonight. Hear that, Sid? It reminds me of that joke. What joke? You know what you get when you combine a dyslexic with an agnostic with an insomniac? Someone who lies awake all night wondering if there is a dog? Yeah. And that's how you know you're in BC, bud. The grass is greener on the west coast. Greener. Get it? We're BCU at the top. Bring it. Go hard or go home. Coming up on Come Dine With Me. I love your hat. Will Sid put a lid on it? It's fruity. <laughs> It's the first night of our week-long stop in Vancouver, a city known as Hollywood North, Raincouver, and Vansterdam, which, truth be told, is probably why hippie trippy Sid moved here in the first place. I'm gonna smoke him, if you know what I mean. So Sid changes into another dope Hawaiian shirt and dons his fedora to greet first guest, Nav. Hello. Hello there. Hi, I'm Nav. Welcome to Crazy Hat Night. Which was super random. I love your hat. Okay, okay now does it express something about your personality? It's fruity. <laughs> Enough said. There's always one in the group. One that likes wearing roadkill. Hello there. Hi. Her name's Rachel. I'm Sid. The panicker. I did not feel that Sid was nervous at all. I felt instant love. Then hats off to you. Well, my hat is fluffy and fun because I'm fluffy and fun. <laughs> No! Okay, Sid, take it down a notch before you scare away rigid Robin. Hi there! Hello there! Oh, welcome I'm to Robin. my home! Well, thank Robin, you. I'm Sid. Awkward hug! This thank is for you? You! Beach bum extraordinaire. If the fedora fits. Well, tell us what your hat means about you. Uh, a bit of a prima donna. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's not a joke. She could use a drink. A properly poured drink. It was filled over the brim. I it's might need cool. a napkin so that I don't yeah. end up wearing there it all go. over my white pants. Oh, okay. Princess! That's who I am, and I'm not afraid just to say so. But is anyone going to be scared of Italian Stallion Alessandro? Well, hello! Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Alex. Good to meet you, Alex. This I'm is for Sid. you, Sid. Nice Thank to you meet very you. much. I like your hat. Welcome to my home. It seemed like he was trying really hard. No, he's just really intimidated. As soon as Alessandro walked through the door, I was like, heart to the floor. Done. This guy's on it. Ten points. Alessandro was... In one word... Hot. This Can I exciting. get you a watermelon martini? I sure will. I'll have a Thank watermelon you martini. You might want to ask for a napkin when it comes. Let it go, Robin. <laughs> oh, Robin. Oh, Robin. This bitch. Toast. To the coast with the most. Oh, oh I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the week. Ditto for Sid. My party's off to an awesome start. The problem is, how am I going to vote low for all these people that I already love? Maybe focus on feeding them first. Down here, we have some well-soaked corn. Yep, corn. For your mane. We're just going to let that do its thing. Way ahead of schedule. In the meantime, we got a little work to do inside. A little work or a little workout? So I guess this is where Sid works out, his workout room. We could you never tell by looking at him. <laughs> well, what is this? Whoa. This crazy machine. <laughs> it looks really interesting. You should try it out. Yeah, Nav, hop on. I think you just, yeah. Oh Whoa. My God. Good Lord. You like that, do you? This ride taking me home. <laughs> oh, my God. His ass was swaying all over the place. I don't think I've had enough to drink for this yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. This is intense. It sounds like something, looks like something you would do with somebody else. Hint, hint, Nav. And I was like, oh, you should jump right here. He didn't, unfortunately. And unfortunately, Sid's not using the guard for his mandolin while he slices cucumbers. From now on... You're going to use the guard. Wonder why. There's one reason, and there's the other reason. <laughs> Maybe Robin's got a first aid kit in her purse. I came with uh, an arsenal of snacks that would have tied me over until I got home tonight. <laughs> of course you did. So that's hella rude to me. Well, what kind of snacks? Uh, I have dark chocolate. Ooh, dark chocolate. I have almonds for wow. protein. Anything else? Antacids, if the food was really, really bad. And don't forget... Cleansing wipes in case the bathroom wasn't 
clean and... Oh! <laughs> Hello, Sid. Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Alex. Awkward. <laughs> Robin, would you like white wine or red? Are the mussels served in a white wine reduction or... White wine. Uh, I'll have white wine, please. Good call. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. My name is Robin. I know about wine, and I'm so smart. Listen, at least she doesn't make bad puns. Really have to get a fridge with a deeper muscle drawer. People are always complaining about the size of my muscles. But um, uh... I don't like seafood in general. Say what? How do you live on the West Coast and not eat mussels? Like, I don't understand. Maybe tonight you'll see food differently. I... <laughs> See food. Get it, Rachel? Um, no. Ah, forget it. Sid adds the mussels to his Dutch oven, along with a few glugs of wine. <laughs> gives them a stir. Oh, that's awesome. And then checks on his main course. Okay, a little uh, corn rotation. Any second now. Why is the corn on when that's for the main? Beats me. I just uh, realized that I've had a bit of a brain fart and these need to rest for a minute because they're actually part of my mane. <laughs> oh, Sid. Are we here for a dinner party? What is this? What day is this? My name is Sid. Have I met you yet? And where are my croutons? Nothing's more embarrassing than a double salmon salad that doesn't have its croutons. Served straight from the bag and loaded up with homemade dressing. Why are you doing that? Apparently everything needs a sound effect. Even the tossing? <laughs> okay, that's enough. The question is, how does it taste? The answer is... Yum! Sid dishes out his salad into cute cucumber bowls, then adds mussels to the plate. More sound effects, really? It just never gets old. Actually, it does. But moving on, the first app of Vancouver Week is served. Bon appétit. Everyone, including the wasps. Oh, my God, wasps. Incoming! <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? You're in the great outdoors. Civilized people eat indoors. Who said anything about being civilized? I don't know how to eat a muscle. Take your fork, stick it in there, and put it in your mouth. Thanks, Professor. I want to share what I know. I can see its insides. <laughs> Is it a boy or a girl? I don't know, but I see intestines and other things. I don't know if I can eat those. Like, man up and eat that. I'm just not sure I can put that in my mouth. Must not make joke. Yay, she did it! I'm never eating that again. Ew. I really love mussels. They're one of my favorite. I just think this is just a little bit dry, like I'm lacking a little bit of broth. Broth? What broth? It was gray water. Not sure why the the uh, broth is so murky looking. The more you rinse mussels in fresh water, you do it faster you kill them. Makes sense. No, you clean that before you give it to me. Or Alex, for that matter. Yeah, I did find seaweed in mine. Adds flavor. Sid, I think the mussels are fantastic. They taste really good. But the salad, unfortunately, I did not like at all. That's dumb. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, time for a little flower power. This is fun. I love it. Why is that fun? Come Dine With Me has headed west to Vancouver, which has been voted most livable city five times in a row, despite the fact that... No one's ever born in Vancouver. Including Sid, Alessandro... I actually moved to Vancouver in 1997 from Florence, Italy. Robin. I was born in Manitoba. And Nav. I was actually born up north in Quinnell. Yep. Which is about like five, six hours away. <laughs> When's the last time you were there? When I was born. Like when I was, when oh, I was there. Oh, I was going to say, so you've never gone to the strip club there called The Onion? No. Who calls a strip club The Onion? Really? Oh my goodness. Rachel. Relax. I wasn't a stripper in Quinnell. <laughs> oh. Bye. I'm not a stripper now. Oh. <laughs> I'm a plumber. Wow. You're a plumber? I am. That's awesome. How cool is that? So Rachel cleans pipes. I don't clean pipes. You lay them, sorry. Oh. <laughs> You'd be surprised what I see. How do you yes. keep all those construction boys off you? Because I can imagine they go, ooh, hey, hey look yeah, at the plumber. Yeah, I got a real mouth on me. Yeah. 
<laughs> I could definitely see her doing some plumbing. <laughs> I am the, how do I put this, manager of electrical systems technology and design for a lighting manufacturer. Did you get that? Sure did. Manager of general blah, 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 blah. Bing, bada, boom, bada, bing, bang, bang. Technology. Which sure sounds more fun than this. We're going to have a little flower arranging session. Oh. <laughs> because I put the me in metrosexual. If you say so. He is the least far off for metrosexual that guy is like he is hetero as they come my father was studied uh, flower arranging at the london polytechnic after the second world war wow still doesn't explain why your dinner guests are doing it i seriously wanted to jump off the balcony this is fun i love it you would this is uh, such a girl thing to do ah, ah. i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh look everyone's having so much fun why is that fun? I don't get that. Now, nah, if you clearly have to get in touch with your feminine side. Well, Sid's definitely in touch with his cheating side. Using bag coleslaw is not cheating as long as you throw away the big fat bits. Sid adds peanut dressing to the slaw and heads outside to judge the flower arranging. I'm going to go for ultra balance and everything. I'm going to have to go with this one. And whose is that? That would be Robin, the big winner. My name is Robin, and I win. Back inside, Sid covers his burger buns with... My homemade plum chutney. And unhusks the corn. Look how perfect that corn looks. Come on, no complaints, right? Just with the way you're slapping slaw half on and half off your burgers. But tidy or not, Sid's main course is ready to serve. On a cedar plank for some reason. It was... Really cool? Surprising. Our main consists of a home ground uh, burger. And sweet corn on the cob from Chilliwack. Which is soon to be gone, gone, gone. Chill out corn. Uh, I, for, for my opinion, the best in the country. Then why isn't Robin eating it? I'm not one to eat corn on the cob in public in front of strangers. What? Tell her to suck it up. Suck it up, Robin. And while you're at it, stop eating your burger with a knife and fork. The burger is really, really tasty. The chutney is really nice. But? The ciabatta bun was Can't blame Sid for that. Did you make the bun? No, I've never actually met anyone who's ever made ciabatta. Really? I've made ciabatta. Oh. Have you made ciabatta? No, now I've met somebody who's made ciabatta. Has. Busted! Damn. Can't turn that around. But Rachel's gonna try. Camping with the kids and doing the tent and the fire and cooking on the fire and just being like Neanderthals on the fire is just, it's awesome. Not for Robin. Room service, five-star accommodations, oh, a concierge. A uh, How is she from Vancouver? How are you West Coast if you don't camp? Did you have a bad experience or what happened? <laughs> no, I have just not had to experience such Neanderthal behavior. I won't camp, I won't eat corn in the cup. <laughs> Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Eating 101 is in session. Chew, let the flavors absorb. Bitch, back off. This week, we're out in beautiful B.C. as cable guy Sid tries to sweeten up his guests. I have a, uh, a B.C. ice wine, and I'd like yum, you to... Uh, yum, yum, <laughs> Partake. I love it. But there's still a problem, right? So you have to remember that, you know, this type of wine would probably be suited to a dark, rich chocolate. Excuse me while I go change my dessert. <laughs> He's making dark chocolate mousse now. <laughs> Why bother when Robin's got some in her bag? Bitch, close your purse and enjoy this dinner party. But then you wouldn't learn anything. Chew, <laughs> let the flavors absorb, and then take a drink of your ice wine. Bitch, back off. I'm going to eat it and drink it as I want. But you're doing it wrong. Let it play happily in your mouth. The two together. She clearly knows what she's doing. You know what? Yeah, I feel it. Right? Mm hmm You're right. I completely concur. Suck up. I bet you she loves me. Oh, I love Nav. That was a lesson in wine. Thank, Thank you, you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. I don't want to say what I really think. Well, save up that honesty, because Sid's about to serve his no-bake cheesecake. I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks. All it needs now is a little raspberry come dine with me squiggle, and Sid's B-52 cheesecake is ready to serve. There you go, my dear. Oh, thank you. 
Does that say? Sure does. There's fancy words on here. Come dine with me. I see that. All right. Oh. <laughs> Where? It's right there, Ray Charles. The hitch like grow up, wake up. And eat your no-bake cheesecake. Yeah, I'm not really all that keen on the unbaked cheesecake. And I'm not sure what is giving it a bitter flavor. Bitter? There's nothing bitter. It's a cheesecake. I like the coffee flavor of the cheesecake, but I feel like it's not... It's not what? Like, there's something missing. Like more coulis? Sid, I think the raspberry coulis is fantastic. How fantastic? I would love to just take that with some vodka and some soda water and make a really good drink out of it. Or just straight from the bottle? Wow, why don't you just lick it off someone? I mean, I'd be down for that. I pretty much threw up in my mouth. Can pie? Pros it? Better get it better get it. And as they say in BC, Groovy, man. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the West Coast re reaction. No, the real reaction is... I mean... <laughs> what a burn! <laughs> Understatement. Unfortunately, he did fall a little short, so I'm going to give Sid a 7. Muscles I will never like, but I really like Sid, so he gets a 6. The West was not one. 6. Tonight, I'm giving Sid a 6. So Sid's West Coast menu earns him 25 points with four nights to go. I'm definitely going to win. And why is that? Do you know what BC stands for, bitches? Bitchin' cook. That is me. I am so pumped to win. I'm very confident for tomorrow. On the next episode... Cheers to Nab heats things up. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Because of that. That's why they better like it. With an Indian feast that's on fire. Literally. Oh my, oh my god. god. As our week in British Columbia continues. I feel like a chicken. This is good. Coming up. Welcome to Vancouver. Come dine with me is out west. Van City what? To find out who is the best. As a Punjabi party boy. Fired up. Tries to keep his cool. Oh my, oh my god. god. That was a total gong show. With a thousand dollar prize at stake. Wow. And the ultimate title of Vancouver host with the most. Ah! Out West, I'm the best. For the first time ever, Come Dine With Me is in Vancouver, British Columbia. One of the greenest, cleanest cities in the world. The birthplace of the Locavore 100-mile diet and a haven for true foodies. That's Vancouver. And this is Nav, a 26-year-old partier who likes to dole out shots almost as much as he likes to take them. I hate a lot of people. What's wrong with people? People piss me off. I can't walk around in crowds with people. They're just like, no one knows how to walk. No one knows where they're going. And they're, they're looking at and it's just bothering me. It's like, why are you looking at that thing like that? Like, why don't you just keep walking? Are you kidding me? Unfortunately not. Meet brawny mountain biker Alessandro, the host of tomorrow night's dinner who's feeling... Confident. Extremely confident. Alex has big pipes. And if anyone knows pipes, it's the host of the fourth night, Wrench Wielding Rachel, a plumber who's here... To show off my cooking skills and to drink and have fun for a week. Funny, funny girl. Says condescending wine connoisseur and host of the final night, Robin, who already has a master plan for the $1,000 prize. When I win, I'm spending the money on new shoes or a new handbag or both. And what's plan B? I don't have plan Bs. I don't need them. Uptight much? I wouldn't say uptight is the word for Robin. She was kind of, um... Rigid, inflexible, a know-it-all? Maybe uptight, yeah. She's pretty anal. And not in the fun way. That's last night's host, Sid, who couldn't quite muscle his way through his appetizer. Not sure why the, the uh, broth is so murky looking. Ew. So grossed out. And sadly, that wasn't the worst part of the night. I made the worst burger I've ever made. But no one can resist a Hawaiian-shirted hippie, so Sid skated by with 25 points. I made a come dine with me dinner, yet some of my guests slept thinner. But I'm still not toast. I'm the host with the most. I'm going to end up the winner. If I burned my dishes and urinated on them, it would still beat Sid's. Well, let's hope neither of those things happen tonight. I think Nav might be the surprise we've all been underestimating. Or not. Well, there's pretty much only like two things or three things in my freezer. Alcohol and maybe some ice cream. If Nav wants to get drunk while he's cooking, I'm all for it. Cheers to Nav.
and to his traditional Indian main course of tandoori chicken. Wow. Now, if it's real tandoori, doesn't that mean it has to be done in a clay oven? Good point, Sydney. I have to cook my chicken different because I don't actually have a tandoori oven. Uh-oh. If they ask me if it's cooked in a tandoori, I'm going to slap them. Sucks to be me. To make his non-tandoori tandoori chicken, Nav puts cardamom, gram masala, and chilies into a pan and toasts. It smells like my mom's house on a good day in here. Must be all that garlic. I need eight cloves. Eight cloves? You don't want to kiss an Indian person after they've had food. There's garlic? Bring it. Nav adds yogurt and more spices to his marinade. Kind of looks like vomit. Very pale vomit. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add the paprika. That's why it's not red. And you call yourself an Indo-Canadian. I'd say I'm Canadian Indian before I'm Indo-Canadian. Which is why Nav's making mac and cheese and cream spinach to go along with his tandoori chicken. That's a little random. Don't you mean cheesy? I don't think you can ever have too much cheese in this macaroni and cheese. It's going to be damn good. I don't care. Nav does. Cheesy, creamy, buttery, oniony, garlicky, everything that I wanted, it's there. They're going to love it. My menu is definitely more sophisticated than this. Sounds like Nav's chances might be wilting faster than his spinach. Shrinkage is never fun. I love cream spinach. Shut up, Robin. Step aside and let Nav do his thing. Which would be drinking and not math. I'm just going to add a little bit extra than a third. Make it a fourth. Fourth of a cup. Someone failed fractions. The competition is going down the drain. And this probably isn't going to help one bit. Because Nav's serving kheer, otherwise known as East Indian rice pudding, just like mom used to make. So I had to call my mom this morning and verify the directions on this just to make sure. I, I pretty much got it down, but I had to call her this morning and check. Lame. Rice pudding blows. So does stealing sugar packets. Well, I didn't steal them. They're just an, an excess at work. So I just borrowed them. Not buying it. And good luck selling the other part of your dessert, chocolate-covered strawberries. This is pretty all over the map. Oh, you have no idea. Is there something else you can use for corn syrup? What's a good replacement for corn syrup? How about no corn syrup? How about we just get a pen? And do what? And cross out. Corn syrup, corn syrup no more. But you better have... A high quality chocolate to make this, uh, make this work. Sorry, Robin. Nav's using semi-sweet chips, which he melts on the stove. And we're dundies on the chocolate. We're ready to get our dip on. If you think Nav's a dip, let us know on Twitter. Hashtag CDWMC. I'm not sure this is a winning menu. But you haven't seen the app yet. Nav's making salmon pakoras with mango salsa. I'm not overly fond of mangoes. Relax, it's not all mangoes. There's onion, too. I'm going to use a lot of red onion because I could eat an onion raw. How much do I hate onions? O-M-G. Oh! If you don't like onions, too bad for you because there's onions all up in my dinner. Nav adds the onions to his mango and then mixes in parsley, salt, and red wine vinegar. Looks pretty good. Cheers to that. I feel good. I feel... Satisfied? Content? Excited? Proud? Thirsty. And that calls for a trip to the local beer store so Nav can pick up some India Pale Ale to go along with his meal. I think this one's going to pair up really well. Um, IPAs are sort of the, the standard go-to beer for anything that's really spicy. That's awesome. So, yeah. This is exactly what I need. Great. Thank you. Beer in hand. It's time for Nav to head home and get ready for the party to end all parties. If I don't win this, I'm going to join Vancouver and riot this bitch. You know what? I'm in the lead. The worst thing that could happen tonight would be me throwing up on the table. I'm bummed. I got this, Capito. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, paper and plastic. Phoned it in. Get a grip. This week, we're out in the wild west of Canada in the third largest city, spectacular by nature, Vancouver. And tonight's host is Party Boy Nav, who should be feeling ready to go. I don't know how to feel like I'm all over the place right now. I'm... Wow! Better get it together, because the Italian Stallion is here. Buddy, Hello. Mr. Alessandro, welcome. Nice to see you. How are you? What's with the side hug, Pinky? The shirt my mom bought me. You know, because she thinks I look really good in pink. So manly. I'm going to try and keep it a beer-filled night. Then maybe don't use a can opener on the bottles. You want me to open this one for you? That'd be awesome. Bromance. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Let's do it Italian style. Careful, you're going to break it. There. Like a real man. Oh, Good I job. broke it. Warned you. 
I don't even know the power of my own strength. What you guys need is a more feminine touch. Too bad Rachel's next. Oh, yeah. Big hug. How are you? Man? Good. How are you? Come in. Come in. Nav was pretty excited when he opened the door. That's because you're his faves. I wish it was just us three. Oh. <laughs> Hate to rain on your parade, but we are in Vancouver, and that means it's raining washed-up hippies. Good to see you, Nav. Good to see you. How are you? Perfect. Perfectly prepared. I'm all about bringing my own champagne. And making yourself at home. All right. And I'm also gonna get rid of that. Whoa, nice throw. <laughs> oh, yeah, just toss that anywhere. I'm leaving all the cleaning for my husband. Oh, really? Ooh, snap. That's the power. <laughs> You're obviously not married to an Italian man. Nope. We got our moms to do. Oh, well. My mom will come over and do my there laundry. You go. Even tonight? She did iron every single one of my clothes, including my underwear. Nice. Which is not the word anyone would use to describe Robin. Oh, my Hi, dear. Hi. Thank you so much. Come in, come in. Does she have to? God, I would just slip my wrist. Yeah. The princess has arrived. Robin is definitely uh, a prima donna, not a princess. What makes you say that? Nav, do you mind if I pour? Oh, that's why. If you'd love to pour, you can go Thank ahead and pour. Yeah. Just taking away from my hosting duties, but that's okay. No, it's not. I need to rein it in. Do this, party it up, let's have some fun. Robin, right. come in here. Yeah. And the party's off to a great start. Nav is definitely my biggest threat in this competition. Oh, yeah, he's such a foodie. I know it's fresh because it says on the sticker, fresh Atlantic salmon. And you can always trust a grocery store. But never a pan of hot oil. That's a crackling. Good thing I'm not naked. Because Alessandro and Rachel are looking for the truth in his bedroom. I guess this is where the dirty magic happens. And oh, look, a yearbook. I wonder what things really say in there about little Nav. Where would I be without you? I'll tell you where. I'd be sitting at home sober, and you know that's <laughs> not a good thing. Totally my type of dude. I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun to go out with. Remember that too much alcohol can make people draw on your face. <laughs> oh, my God. Party animal. He clearly hasn't changed much in the last few years. But he has learned how to whip up a batter for his pakora. This is just warm water and the corn flour. Nav adds spices and coats his salmon chunks. Big old gush mush of stuff. Ah, uh, Nav, that's the least of your worries. Paper napkins. Phoned it in. The table setting, um, uh, what's the word? Oh, yes, this word sucked. This is not real lace. What? Is that right? Oh. It's plastic. OMG, the horror. Tacky, to say the least. Come on, get a grip. Didn't you guys have this preconceived notion or thought in your mind? Yeah, we know what notion means. That Nav would have been, you know, all about the window dressing. Stop beating around the bush, Robin. He's the gay man who didn't prep the table. <laughs> I'll say it. Of course you will. Sid likes to hear himself talk. Much like Nev. They better like this because I put my actual sweat. Because ah, of that. That's why they better like it. Like it? They don't even know what it is. So what is pecora? Because in Italian, pecora is a goat. <laughs> But will Nav get everyone's goat? He adds a little cilantro for color, and salmon pecoras are ready to serve. Hold on hey, one Nav. second, I'll be right back. Ooh, ah. Presentation was pretty simplistic. Well, it is just... Salmon pecora with mango salsa in the middle. And yeah, enjoy. Traditionally, yeah. pecora, yes. how would you say it's defined? Is it a dumpling? It's a fritter. That's the direct it's a fritter, of course. Fritter, it's yes. Deep fried. Deep fried okay. fritter, yes. If you want to fritter away your time cooking, then head to WNetwork.com for all of Nav's recipes. I thought it was burned. I thought it was tasteless. You would know. Sid is a whiner. Um, hey, pot, the kettle called. Let me know when I can critique it. Later, tan lines. It's Alessandro's turn. I gotta say, this was absolutely one of the most delicious appetizers I've ever had. Like, ever, ever? No. Moving on. I'm not a big seafood person, and I don't really like raw onion either, but the combination of the salsa with the pakora, it's really tasty. I'm really impressed. That makes me so happy. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Robin isn't. I did not want to love it as much as I did. This is the bomb. Oh, I'm so glad you liked I it. I could eat. Those that don't want to finish theirs, I will help you do it. Really? 
really. Yes, really. <laughs> Would you like some more? Oh, if you're yeah, if you're go. handing it over, but you need to put in the, some of that so uh, salsa as well. Hello, taste. Where are you? Gloating in the kitchen. I'm done. I got it. It's in the bag. Coming up, it takes all kinds. I was part of the soccer team at our high school. I was a punk rocker in high school. I was a nerd. Yeah, no, he was a nerd. <laughs> It's the second night in our search for the host with the most in Vancouver, the most multicultural city in Canada. And ironically, Nav is drizzling olive oil over his mac and cheese. Look at night and brown, just like the host. Then don't you mean toasted? Shot, 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 shot. <laughs> Careful, there's whiskey in there. Whiskey makes me 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And what else, Rachel? And mean. And it makes Alex sentimental. I was part of the soccer team at our high school, and we won the championship every year. So you were known as the big jock. I was known as number 10, which is number 10 is the guy that scores the goal. Oh, I'm not bragging, but I'm actually, oh, not bragging, bragging, but I am bragging. Who knew? I was a nerd. No, no way. No, no. Yeah, no, he was a nerd. He's still a nerd. I was a punk rocker in high school. Punk rocker. <laughs> what? Crazy. I feel bad because I kind of bullied people in high school. <gasps> Nav, a bully? Nav couldn't bully a puppy. Now I have such remorse for it. You can learn a lot from guilt. If I see anybody that's hurting or not doing so well, I'm going to step up and be there because I know how I used to act in the past. Aww. Made me love him even more. Then hopefully you'll forgive him for this. Ah, I forgot to put my chili in. You forgot to put the chili in what? It's supposed to go in the tandoori chicken. Oh my god. I have to figure out how to get this in there because I really want them to have the spice. So let's figure this out. Uh, just cut it up and use it as a garnish on your air quote tandoori chicken. They're going to be like, where's your tandoor, Nav? Oh, come on, Nav. No one would be that picky. I didn't look around really closely, but I didn't see a clay oven. It's at your mom's house. And with that epic burn, Nav's tandoori chicken, cream spinach, and mac and cheese are ready to serve. It is dinner time. Oh. Presentation, boo. I didn't think there was any presentation. Yeah, but you have high standards. It was just like, this is what I'm serving, and I dig it. What we have here is non-tandoori tandoori oven baked tandoori chicken. Uh, what? So it's a non-tandoori oven, but oven baked tandoori chicken. Gotcha. Got it. Tandoori chicken. Get over it and eat the chicken. Loved, loved, loved it. The tandoori chicken is so good. That's two for two. Oh, we did it again. I love the tandoori chicken. Okay. It's so tasty. The cream spinach is kind of a nice, like, like, ooh, it's really spicy in my mouth. Ooh, I'll have a little bit of cream spinach, and it kind of brings you back to reality. Or just back to the mac and cheese. I don't think you hit it with the mac and cheese, okay. but you know what? It's not really part of my culture. Yeah, wasps know nothing about mac and cheese. Right back at you, Sid. Every time Sid is speaking, all I hear is wah, 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 wah. You don't have any time you serve an Italian man pasta, he's going to fall in love with you. You know that. Get in line. I already loved Nav yesterday. The chicken for me is just a little bit dry. Okay. The flavor is fantastic. Okay. But all together? I'm not sure about the mix of the uh, mac and cheese with the tandoori chicken. Come on, it's cultural. That's just, just me in a nutshell. You know, Canadian guy with yeah. a little bit of a spin. And a lot of grooming. I'm manscaping here. Sorry. <laughs> Did you say manscaping? What the hell is manscaping? Any removal of sort of hair on the eyebrows, even shaving. My husband waxes his privates. Now there's a mental image. Mm. Nobody wants to wants to think about shaved uh, while you're eating tandoori chicken and mac and cheese. Nav might. At what age did you actually realize that you were gay? I don't think there was a certain age. When I was younger, we used to watch a lot of pro wrestling, and I think that pretty much did it for me. <laughs> that really threw me for a curveball. Then just wait. I have a big surprise for you guys. Wonder what it could be. I wasn't sure what Nav's surprise was going to be. That's why they call it a surprise. Well, what goes better with an Indo-Canadian dinner party than... Some good old banger dancing with my cousin Devinder here. 
Hey, Devender. Poor bastard. Why? This isn't awkward at all. It just reminded me of uh, a, a dance from the 80s. Devender can dance if he wants to. I thought it was uh, kind of weird. And it's about to get weirder. Let's join into a circle. So we'll move some steps. Why are we all screwed in light bulbs? Come on. <laughs> Seriously. Fine. Then do the rolling out paper towels move. Back of my and now low. That looks fun. For five seconds. Coming up, Nav's playing with fire. Hello. Oh, my, oh my God. God. That was a total dog show. It's night two in our competition, and we're in the wilds of downtown Vancouver, where Nav's guests are all fired up. Nav, if I had to describe you uh, as a food, I would describe you, uh, I, you know, as a flambe, because you're very sweet, and you're definitely on fire. Now, Robin, do Rachel. Rachel, I would describe you as garlic. Garlic? Nobody wants to be called garlic. Oh, I like garlic. Alessandro. Uh-oh. My gorgonzola. <laughs> <laughs> you are strong, my friend. You are blue. And smelly. I was uh, more concentrating on the depth of flavor. Well, that doesn't make it any better. Sid is a lush. And Nav is still on the Indo-Canadian kick. This right here is the rice pudding that's part of my heritage. And this is the chocolate-covered strawberries that I've grown to love because of the country that I live in. And there's just one last thing. Time to let it up. Fire it up. Nav adds a little sparkle to his dish, and dessert is ready to serve. Ooh. Ooh. Sparkling as per Nav style. Oh. My experience is that you get a dessert covered in disgusting ash. Party pooper. No, yeah. sit, sit, take them out before they end up all over Ooh. your... Oh, my That's God, it is, too. <laughs> Robin, what are you doing? I was freaking out. That's what I was doing. Next thing you know, Hello. flaming all over the place. Now it's a party. Oh, good. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I didn't know it was going to be no. like that. Oh. <laughs> that was a total gong show. Oh, that just happened. That was spectacular. Sid, oh that was all your fault. You told gonna me to take it out before it went down into my... I sat here quietly oh like a Oh, my God. Boy. You what? are so at fault over that one. <laughs> what? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to Sid. <laughs> now that we've played the flame blame game, time to try the... Coconut rice pudding here with um, some chocolate-covered strawberries for a little bit of a twist. I've never eaten rice pudding. Okay. And I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised. I hardly think so. It's actually pretty disgusting. Well, at least you didn't say it to Nav's face. Rice pudding, meh, to me is bland. But there are chocolate-covered strawberries on it. That's not bland. The strawberries and chocolate were very well executed. Yeah. Very yummy. As far as rice pudding goes, I've never really had it before. Lucky you. Rice pudding is not for me. Let's just get a final cheers to this. Thank you, Thank you so much. It was the best party I think that I've ever thrown. But was it enough? Tonight, Navi was great. I'm going to give him an eight. He gets an eight. Sid spoke to infinity, but Nav's going to get an eight. Tandoori chicken was awesome. The rest of the meal, meh. Just hold up the card. Six. So Nav's Indo-Canadian feast lands him in first place with an impressive 30 points. And the fun has just begun. Hell yeah, I want to win this thing. I need the cash. I want the cash. I deserve the cash. There will be no paper napkins at my party. I'm 100% positive that I'm the best cook in this competition. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me... Por arriba. Start your engines. Because it's the Italian Stallion... Perfecto. I'm on fire. Oh. Versus Ms. High Horse. It's just so disgusting. I hope you enjoy it. And everyone puts on their dancing shoes as our quest for the best in the West continues. Bring it on. Coming up... Vancouver rocks. BC is the place to be. We're on a mission to find out who's the best in the West. <laughs> Cheers! As an Italian cliché... Bada bing, bada boom. ...tries to prove he's the real deal. It's supposed to make you cry. It's so good. This is not my kind of party. It's just so disgusting. With $1,000 at stake and the bragging rights as BC host with the most. <laughs> the beach is that way. 
We've packed up the crew and headed 3,400 kilometers west to prove that the left coast is right on. And today, we're in the birthplace of beautiful British Columbia. Welcome to Langley, where all bumped up Alex is living the life on two wheels and with two daughters. <laughs> Makes me emotional. <laughs> hey, Guidos don't cry. I'm certainly not a Guido. Whatever, dude. I don't consider myself to be a dude. <laughs> then what are you? I'm the best Italian in Vancouver, period. You need to cut back on the caffeine. Italians need espresso to function. We need espresso and we need the love of a good woman. That's what's really important. And the good woman is usually our mother. <laughs> Alessandro's so cute. But he's no competition for tomorrow night's host, Raunchy Rachel, the plumber who's determined to wrench the win away from everyone else. I am here because I want to win this. That's why. <laughs> Meet Robin, the snobby aspiring sommelier who won't have any trouble finding anything to whine about at everyone else's house. There's the right way, and then there's Robin's way. Love ya, you're going down. That stings almost as much as the wasps did when Sid hosted Al Fresco on night one. <laughs> I think we can safely say that shows poor judgment. And low scores to boot. Sid only got 25 points. That ship sailed. Right into Nav's wake, because last night, despite almost burning down the house, pyrotechnics, he turned on the charm. Nav was an awesome host. And turned everyone into salmon pakora fans. I could have served dirt and they would have eaten it. He could be right, because Nav cleaned up. And if Alessandro gets less than 30, he'll wind up in second. I'd rather be last than be second. Are you sure? Bada bing, bada boom. Let's see if Alessandro's menu is as macho as he is. Drum roll, please. Alex is making flame-cooked pizzetta with prosciutto, arugula, and cambazzola cheese, served with a tomato boccaccini tower. That sounds like a lot of work because Alex is making his own pizza dough and it starts with olio d'oliva toscano Alessandro is very Italian in his mixer Alessandro adds yeast sugar salt and white balsamic vinegar just a little splash mm -mm -mm. after he adds flour and mixes it's time to knead the dough Alessandro's gonna just feed us like an Italian grandmother well hopefully Nona doesn't see this feels like a boob takes one to know one <laughs> Alessandro preps his prosciutto. Who doesn't like prosciutto? Then it's time to slice his... Fresh buffalo mozzarella. When he really could just shred it. Some manja cake at one point when pizza came to North America said, you know what, let's shred this cheese. But really, this is the way it goes on in a pizza in Italy. Okay, but what gives with the cambazzola? I have no idea what the hell a cambazzola cheese is. It's uh, a mixture of gorgonzola, Italian gorgonzola, and a French brie. Alessandro dresses the arugula with lemon and oil and lovingly massages it. If you love the food, it loves you. I love that, love that, love that. And so does Mama. My mother called me and she said, Alex, make sure you keep it clean eh, when you cook. Eh? Make sure you keep it clean so you know, people think that you're crazy. You know? They think that you're dirty. You're no dirty boy. This is not really working for me. But will everyone play along with the main course? The only thing that I will not eat is lamb. Really interesting. And slightly scary, because Alex is serving lamb shanks in a Tuscan tomato gravy. Ah! I know some people don't like lamb. I really don't like lamb. Come on, hear him out. It's from a local butcher shop, and it's um, free range, uh, grass fed, with no uh, antibiotics whatsoever. That sounds nice. Doesn't it, though? Uh, I don't like eating baby animals. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, little lamb. I'm not eating it. Shh, he'll hear you. I'm not going to be silent about the lamb. Shocker. Alessandro chops up a mirepoix of carrots, celery, and onion. Sid is not a big fan of the chipotle, of the onion. Me? Yes, you. I can't describe to you how much I hate onions. Fine. You guys don't eat the lamb, don't eat the onions. You could just fill up on gnocchi. I don't know how that's going to work for me. Again. If my guests eat gnocchi, uh, I, sadly, I'm going to ask them to leave. But then you won't score. My aunt used to say, Alessandro, you want to take the girls to bed? You got to learn how to cook. And I have to say, uh, you know, she was right. My, I think my wife married me because I was... Uh, a good cook. If you give a little nookie when a gnocco makes you gnocchi, tell us by tweeting hashtag CDWMC. If a girl says to a guy you're a gnocco, it means you're a handsome guy. Like you're a beefcake. Who knows how to Lorena Bobbitt gnocchi dough? I'm very excited to try the homemade gnocchi. 
But make sure you save room for Alessandro's Cappuccino Milfoya. I have not a clue what that is. What is a Fogli? Here's a hint. Foya is leaves and mill is a thousand. So a thousand leaves. Perfecto. And that means da 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 puff pastry. If he's making the puff pastry from scratch, I'd be very surprised. Surprise! And he's already got the pastella ready. The pastella is the dough that actually is wrapped around the butter. Awesome! Indeed, because everyone always makes the excuse, I don't know anyone who makes puff pastry. Well, listen up, folks. Now you do. <laughs> My goal is to uh, make the best puff pastry that... Uh, my fellow contestants have ever tasted in their life. Let the good times roll. Because every 30 minutes, Alex has to take his dough out of the freezer and add another layer of dough. Risky. Don't fear the dough. Just yell at it. Ma che cazzo stai facendo? I'm excited to eat. Actually, everyone's going to be excited tonight. And that's not just because of Alessandro's whipped cream. Dress for a sexy night on the town. Fun. That's how I always dress. Maybe I'll wear a tank top. <laughs> I'm ready to party. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, guess who's being a pest? A fly landed in my drink. Bugs are protein, you know that, right? But he might have had a poo. Come Dine With Me is out in beautiful British Columbia. And Alessandro has a sexy dress code, which doesn't explain the t-shirt and bandage. Can't wait for everyone to arrive. I'm going to show them what a real dinner party's about. Well, it's about to get chatty, because here's Sid. Hello! Ching your dog! Hey, oh, Alessandro! Oh, oh. How are you, my friend? Welcome. Welcome to my home. How does our host seem? Underdressed. That's how we seem. <laughs> but Robin and Rachel are dressed to the nines. Hello! Yoo, your, your ladies have arrived. arrived! Hello, ladies! Hello. Welcome to my home. Wow, sexy night on the town. I love it. They don't. What the f was that? We were dressed to sexy night on the town, but he sure wasn't. Hubba, hubba, look at you two. Oh, gorgeous. So glad to see you too. I don't like Sid. We have uh, some organic Prosecco and some raspberry liqueur with a raspberry ice cube. I would prefer to be here. Ain't no flies on you. A fly landed in my drink. Bugs are protein, you know that, right? But he might have had a poop. I'm pretty sure it actually didn't take a poop. I'll replace it for you. <laughs> no, no, I'll take it. <laughs> there, Sid. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Ew, Sid's gonna drink the poop drink. Which was fine, by the way. Oh, this is gonna bug you, Major Hank. Oh, my God. I can't help myself. She's definitely bugging me. Better kill her with kindness. Robin, darling, I'm gonna protect you from any bugs. I made a little lid <laughs> for you. Oh. No bugs are gonna get in there unless you spit one out. Oh, come on. She's never going to use a lid. Oh. It was an amazing gesture. With ulterior motives. He did what he had to do in order to win the points. But he's already won over final guest Nav. Hello, oh. Nav. How are you? Good. Welcome. Let me in. Why so eager? He has that face and those guns. He's, he's good for days. Well, you guys, it is hump day. Italian day. You guys are all very sexy, so let's get it on. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Alessandro heads off to the kitchen where he's preparing the tomato and cheese tower. Torre. La torre. Fine, torre. Alessandro slices up Roma tomatoes. Because they're Italian. Like a me. No. Shut up, Robin. Then it's a good thing you don't know that she and Nav have found your photo album. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's got. Why are we whispering? Oh, good golly. What do we have here? Just a picture of Alessandro's, uh, wife. Alessandro's wife would be much more beautiful than that. Maybe it's his sister, but that's a very muscular sister. Oh, she's just big boned. I think that. No. Alessandro. No. Oh, I do. I think I recognize those breasts. You recognize those breasts? I do. Oh, my. And I really, really want to find out where he got that bra. I think Buddy in the Bra looked awesome. Like, I did it. Careful, Nav, or your cycles might sync up. Oh. Oh. What do we got here? Ooh, we got a scooter. Mm, we got an Italian scooter. Nice. Oh, my. <laughs> Big buff. The sexy guy on the scooter. Doesn't make sense to me. How about a skinny, nerdy guy? <laughs> I would love to have actually fired it up. 
All right, that's enough. Oh my God, um, there's little flags all over this thing. I know, it is hyper guido. <laughs> that really suits the whole Italian mystique. Just like the pizza. Check out this dough, tripled in size. If you'd like to swell up with pride at your next dinner party, go to wnetwork.com for all of Alessandro's recipes. The real deal Italian pizza because uh, you got a real deal Italian guy making it. Alessandro tops his pizza with olive oil, prosciutto, and cambozzola, and takes it out to the pizza stone in the barbie. And you're in there, they smoke away. While Professor Robin gives a lecture on intermediate cheese. Cambozzola is... Very similar to blue cheese. Not the same. Relax, it's not that bad. Too late. I hella hate blue cheese. I just feel like it's stinky and it smells and it just does, does not taste good. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But the colors of Alessandro's salad are no shocker. The Italian flag is green, white, and red. So let's start with a little bit of cucumbers. Then some bocaccini. A little pomodoro romano. Alessandro finishes stacking his salad, adds the pizzettas, and his app is ready to serve. All right, here we are. Thank Enjoy. You, Alessandro. When the plate first came out to me, I thought, oh, it's a little piece of bread and some side salads. No, you philistine, it's... A little pizzetta cooked on the barbecue with my homemade crust, prosciutto, arugula, and cambozzola, and my take on the uh, classic tomato bocconcini salad, my homemade uh, cambozzola dressing. The little pizza thingy is so, so good. I want to keep more, more, more. Amazing! Appetizer was amazing sucks to be nav then i'm actually kind of mad because i ate every piece of that even the stinky cheese i'm not into like the the blue cheesy kind of over cheesy pungent flavor yeah. but it's so soft on this one like i'm i'm digging it i'm really disappointed <gasps> i was hoping to hate this meal <laughs> <laughs> wow is it good you knocked it out of the park the crust was perfect the execution was delicious, and I, I was most impressed. Alessandro? Yes, Robin? My palate loves you. <laughs> my waistline? Not so much. <laughs> Alessandro is now my nemesis. Boom, boom. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Robin goes ballistic. I don't eat lamb. I would really prefer that it not be served to me at all. OK, no problem. I think that's hella rude. We're midway through our week in vibrant Vancouver, and Alessandro's busy braising his lamb. These look fantastic. Oh, you can just smell this. Look, they're just falling off the bone. Falling off the bone. Mmm, lamb. I don't eat lamb. Oh. Ever. Never, ever, ever. Don't be such a baby. Robin, I am totally with you. I cannot handle the idea of eating a baby animal. Wah, wah. I don't understand the difference between a baby animal and an adult animal. I, I think, do. I think gravy is gravy and meat <laughs> is meat. No, there's a cuteness scale. That just feels oh. like such a I don't like the smell of lamb. This is going to be really, really hard for me to ingest this meat. Maybe some shots will ease the pain. I know there's some sensitivity to lamb, so what I can do is I can put the lamb on the side of the gnocchi, and if you want to try it, you're welcome to it. If not, that's fine. No offense. I would really prefer that it not be served to me at all. Okay, no problem. I think that's hella rude. I would love you to serve it the way it was intended, please. Atta girl, Rach. Unless I'm deadly allergic to something, I mean it. Yeah, Robin. How annoying is Robin right now? What are you going to do? I'm gonna pull up my pants, I'm gonna suck it up, I'm gonna make her a special dish. Good idea. It's the path of least resistance is to accommodate Robin as the princess. This is a um, olive oil and butter sage cream sauce with pepperoncino. It'll go really good with the gnocchi. It'll knock it out of the ballpark for her. Alessandro tosses the gnocchi in the sauce and then gets to plating his main. A little uh, tomato gravy. And a little grana padano. Undisputed king of cheese. And finally, the lamb shank. And Alessandro's Tuscan lamb dish is ready to serve. To all the polite people. Robin, I quickly whipped up a, a sage and butter a sauce for you with just plain white gnocchi. Thank I you. hope you enjoy it. Oh. And I'll be right back with yours. What a kind and attentive host. I wouldn't have done it. But what's done is done, and it's time to try the... Homemade gnocchi with a slow uh, roasted lamb shank and a Tuscan tomato gravy. The gnocchi is the best gnocchi I've ever had. 
which isn't saying much. Because I hate gnocchi. At least you like lamb, unlike Rachy Rage. Wow, I can't believe that I am enjoying this little leg of beautiful babiness. But think of how cute it was. I don't care. The lamb still has that off flavor for me, so that's not something that I'm totally into, but the gnocchi and the tomato gravy is awesome. I ate it, I have no problem eating it. Hint, hint, Robin. Alessandro, I thank you so much for appreciating my limitations regarding the lamb, and the gnocchi was tender and flavorful. Yeah, well, he does know a thing or two about dressing it up. Well, we just found a compromising picture of uh, what we have deemed to assume is Mr. Alessandro in a high-cut skirt with uh, just a bra on. Go on! Yeah. I was actually on stage in front of uh, 600 people in an audience, and we were doing a cabaret sketch. <gasps> and that goes back to my days when I was an entertainer in resorts. I was an actor for a number of years. Well, acting the fool. Huh. I think that says it all. At one point in my life, I thought that I really had a chance uh, to become a singer. That's what I really wanted to do. He sings too? The only way he could get more attractive is if he did a amazing strip tease. Wouldn't put it past him. What can't he do? Yeah, exactly. I can read, write, and speak Spanish as well. Of course you can. You know, now I just feel inadequate. <laughs> I want some of that. Robinho, ¿qué se puede decir de ti? Tú eres una mujer más linda, eh, muy inteligente, pero te falta un poquito de personalidad. Damn! That sounded hot. And now in English. Robin, you're a wonderful lady and you're very <laughs> eloquent and uh, we'd love to have you here at my house. Aww. Liar. He was wonderful. They'll take points any way they come. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the plumber starts the waterworks. This is not my kind of party. It's night three of Come Dine With Me's Best Out West, and the only thing host Alessandro likes more than cooking is riding around on his scooter. But you do it with all the protection. Hell no, I wear a tank top and just a helmet, that's it. Don't tell me that, my dad. <laughs> no, my dad hurt himself really bad on a bike, and really? to hear that you're not safe, it really scares me. Got real. My dad um, crashed or skidded out about four blocks from home mm. and broke his back. He passed away about six months before I married the love of my life. It triggered a lot of stuff for me, which was very, very personal. You all right, Sid? Sid um, got very upset, and that's okay. Not according to No Heart Nav. What the f is going on here? This is not my kind of party. Hmm, I wonder what could turn this around. Shot, shot, shot. <laughs> So let me go get that for you. He's a great host. Cheers. 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 And cheers to Alessandro's dessert, which he stacked with... A layer of love, a layer of pastry, a layer of love, a layer of pastry. What more could anyone have possibly asked for? Not much. Alessandro's cappuccino milfoy is served. Millefoglie in Italian means uh, a thousand layers. Of deliciousness... This is unbelievable. I was blown away. Let's see if Nav's been blown too. Alessandro, sir, <laughs> I love your presentation. I feel the cup is really awesome. It makes it really easier to get to my face. Mm -hmm. But once it got there... The puff pastry was kind of like eating like a hard brick. Ah, uh, just inhale it. Robin, yours is empty. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> There's still some chocolate. This was amazing. But does Rachel agree? I love the crunchy, I love the chocolate, I love the cream. So you loved it? I wouldn't say I loved it. Well, you're going to love this. My dear friends, uh, the journey through Italy is not over yet. We still have one more stop, uh, so... Te voglio bene But follow me in the garage. Oh, oh, cheers! The garage? What could be in there? I had no idea what this guy was going to pull up. Open your eyes and let's party! Ah! Oh, just your average Jersey nightclub. That's what I've been waiting for. This emotions and drama. Let's get some fist pumping going. It was mortifying, but anyway, whatever.
Rachel seems to like it. You want to see how I was dancing? Nope. So will Alex trip the light fantastic to a win? I cooked a wicked meal, uh, got some tears, had a dance party in my garage for sakes. Come on, if that's not number one, I don't even know what is. Anything else? Boom. Time to see what the manja cakes thought. Tonight was borderline perfect night for me. Alessandro gets a nine. Tonight, I give him an eight. Dinner party tonight was amazing, but the lamb will give me nightmares. For that reason, I'm giving Alessandro an eight. The main was whatever, the dessert was meh, but the dance party at the end was exactly what I was looking for, seven. So the Italian stallion gallops into first place with 32 points, but there are still two nights to go. I still want to win this bad. I know I'm going to win. You know what? There's only one queen this week, and it's this bitch, queen of the coast. I'm tired, but tomorrow's my night, and I'm going to kill it. On the next episode... Things get slippery as Rachel puts her heart and soul into it. Da, 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 da. This is drink your effing face off week. <laughs> when the battle for Vancouver's top spot continues. Rise the bull! Rise the bull! Come dine with me, Vancouver! Coming up... Vancouver rocks! West Coast is where it's... We're out west in B.C. to find the toast of the coast as a potty mouth plumber oh. tries to slip into first place. Hell yeah! But will she go down the drain? It was like prison food. I'm going to torch the competition. This week, we're in beautiful British Columbia to find the finest booties and most hospitable hosts in the West. And in the spotlight today is Rachel, a party girl turned plumber. I stayed out really late. I went to work drunk. I smoked cigarettes like a mofo. Like, I was a rebel to my parents. And now? I'm getting older, so I'm trying to behave. Is it working? Let me check out your pipes. Well, that answers that question. Rachel is definitely rough around the edges. That's tomorrow night's host, Refined Robin, a wine snob who should put a cork in it. I'm a self-proclaimed princess and proud of it. I don't think that I'm going to get Christmas cards from Robin. That's because on night one, Sid failed to impress Ms. High and Mighty with his burgers and only scored 25 points. I'm still in it. You've got to be joking. I don't really think Sid is funny, but I think Sid thinks Sid is funny. That's negative Nelly Nav, whose Indo-Canadian fusion feast on night two scored him a solid 30 points. I got this. Meet Macho Man Alessandro, who hosted last night and wowed his guests with an authentic Italian feast, including a red, white, and green caprese salad and a controversial main. I don't eat lamb. It's just as simple as that. Got Learn how to cook. Uh-oh. Looks like we might have a sore winner on our hands because Alessandro's in the lead with 32 points. Bada bing, bada boom. A little too Italian for me. That's bad news for Rachel because she's going to try to outgun the Guido with the second Italian menu of the week. Hopefully mine is better than his. It's just the same. Literally, because Rachel's kicking it all off with a caprese salad. Huh. I that last night. Surprise, surprise. No, wait, it's totally different. His was like a cream dressing, mine is an oil-based. And Alex used real mozzarella di buffalo. And Rachel's got the poor man's bocaccini. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> More flavorless cheese. <laughs> so, yeah, I could probably do it with my hands tied behind my back. But not the dessert, because Rachel's going all out and making cranberry orange white chocolate biscotti and vanilla bean ice cream. Holy, that's a mouthful. I love vanilla ice cream. And this one's homemade. I don't have a lot of interest in ice cream, period. Um, I think it's a chick thing. No, it's a Madagascar thing, because Rach has... Actual vanilla bean. The seeds in here are what's going to give it its yummy, yummy taste. Rachel adds sugar and a... Big fat cup of milk. Then cream and sets on the stove. All right, I guess I'll just hang out and drink beer until that's boiled. That a girl, drink up. If I were Rachel, 
I would think long and hard about having any alcohol while she's prepping her dinner. But she's still sober enough to combine her cream and eggs. Perfect. So now this goes back on the stove to hit 170 degrees. No boiling this time. And then it chills. And turns into... Homemade ice cream, bitches! Nice. Could be a bomb. <laughs> or an explosion of flavor as Rachel gets working on her cranberry orange white chocolate biscotti. From scratch. It's a cop out if you just go to the store and buy a piece of pre-made biscotti. Rachel adds eggs to the biscotti batter. I can do a one-handed break. Want to see? Sure do. Boom. How exciting! I'm not really excited. But it's blending time. Get ready for loud noises! Do I really have to go to this party? Yes, you do. Because you wouldn't want to miss the white chocolate and cranberries Rachel's adding to her dough. Nice. If you think the Italian stallion is going to be naughty about the babe's biscotti, tweet us using hashtag CDWMC. Be a critic. Go for it. I'm Italian. I don't really like biscotti. Then just fill up on the main. Mushroom risotto and herb chicken. Man, that sounds so gray. But so labor intensive. I doubt she's making her own broth. Oh, but she is. And she's using a ton of mushrooms. She better wash them. Why? Because of the poop? I'm a plumber. I don't want no on my mushrooms. The West Coast is filled with fantastic mushrooms. And yet... I'm going to use button mushrooms for the stock. Snoozeville. If you're going to go out and make a mushroom risotto, it needs to be some bossy mushrooms. What does that mean? Like the good kind of mushrooms. Magical. Rachel puts in the boring buttons and adds onions. I would use shallots. And you probably wouldn't do this either. Mushroom bourbons? Honestly, I don't even pay attention to Rachel's rock. Chicken. <laughs> Speaking of which... I'm hoping it's a chicken breast. I don't have any time for a bone. No comment. It's not lamb. Thanks, Captain Obvious. These are some big boobies. They kind of match me. I really hope that she uses uh, fresh herbs for this chicken. Sadly, no, because Rachel's using dried... Rosemary, basil, oregano, and sage. Nothing about this menu so far impresses me. Except that Rachel's going above and beyond and getting some expert advice in the booze department. I need a little bit of help. Okay, what are you looking for? I am throwing a party tonight, and I have a few winos in my group, and I'd like to get some wine that will impress a little bit. Not to mention getting them pumped up for the bathing suit dress code. I hate it. Who cares? We get to see Alessandro in a bathing suit. I'm not taking my shirt off for anybody. I think I got another one beat. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, <laughs> Nav busts out the awkward. <laughs> it turned me off immensely. We're spending the week in Vancouver, where more people dine out more often than anywhere else in North America. But hoping to satisfy her guests at home is silk-robed Rachel. It's go time. Otherwise known as... Shoot time. Let's hope Sid and Nav can handle it. Hi, guys. Woo! Come on in. Don't be shy. Sexy for some, but not for me. But no complaints from Sid. I got a little crush on Rachel. <laughs> she looked hot. Stacked and stocked. Come on in, sit down. I've got a variety here. I've got some beer for now. Yeah. I've got some champers for you. Woo. Damn, this girl has hella drinks. Not to mention a sexy slice of beefcake. Oh, and Robin. Hi, guys. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you guys? Traumatized. Holy <laughs> was there a lot of cleavage? Jeez. <laughs> Eyes north, mister. You look very uh, sleek and sexy. <laughs> or in other words... Rachel looked like an 80s porn star. If the bikini fits... Why bathing suits? Because of this! A water slide, are you serious? It is what I call a lawn body slide. Wow! Whee! How fun! Damn, let's do this. Oh, yeah! Woohoo! I'm not doing that. What? No, I'm not doing that. Robin, I'm gonna grab you like this and just toss you right down the stairs. How can you say no to She's that? She's enjoying that. I want to see you go down flailing. No! <laughs> Why would you do that? Because I don't really get along with Robin. I think she's full of Put a lid on it, Al. I brought um, cats so that no one would get wet hair oh, because we don't want to deal with that. Good thinking. My hair is way too precious to ruin. Not that it matters to Robin. Shoot me. 
She's definitely a stick in the mud. Peer pressure time. Robin! 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 Yeah, clap for Robin. Everybody. <laughs> My life is over. Just go for it. <laughs> why are you stopping? I got stuck. <laughs> Wonder why. She's pretty dry, so I'm, you know, I'm not surprised. Second time's a charm. <laughs> Nope, still stuck. It's so not fair. Show her how it's done, Sydney. <laughs> Next up, it's the bromance. <laughs> Gutter ball. Yeah, I was trying to race Nav, actually. He beat me every time, you little bugger. He's more slippy. <laughs> it's not my first time in a water slide. Or Rachel's, apparently. <laughs> Look at her go! She's got pontoons. And some really happy guests. Go! Oh, I hate to admit it, but it was fun. I was so proud that Robin went on the slide. And she didn't just go once. She went three times. That's epic. Yeah, because usually she's just a heel. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is actually... This is shocking. A little surprise. Why, because Rachel's a plumber? She's a butch. Unlike Sid. da 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 <clears throat> da 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 Nice shoes, Sydney. They looked awesome on me. So humble. Sid's like mold. He grows on you. I better put these away so we don't get busted. Did someone say busted? Ho, ho, ho. What do you see? What do you see? Now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boobies. <laughs> Two beautiful breasts. <laughs> Nav's favorite. Turned me off immensely. Oh, come on. Give him a whirl. You know, Nav. Oh, my God. Let <laughs> <laughs> I me mean, just. Uh, that's, that's the perfect size for you. I have to say, they probably look better on Nav than they do on Rachel. <laughs> You're one to talk. <laughs> oh, you know. My nipples are so hot today. You need to stop. You need to stop. I can't do this. This is too much. But Rachel's caprese salad is just right. I like to be able to have the right amount of tomato with the right amount of bocaccini. And just the right amount of balsamic drizzle. As for plating, I don't know what the I'm doing. I'm just winging it. Kind of like the cutlery. It's backwards. Know. It's backwards. I don't know backwards from forwards. Robin does. I research stuff like that to make sure that I don't make that mistake. Well, la di da I don't care if the cutlery is backwards. Fingers crossed you don't care about deja vu, too, because the second caprese salad of the week is ready to serve. Hope everybody's hungry. And not too, too judgmental. I didn't like the presentation. But it's the taste that matters, so dig in to the... Tomato bocaccini, fresh basil, uh, balsamic reduction. Rachel, mm -hmm. tomato bocaccini for an Italian guy, come on. This is fantastic. <laughs> as fantastic as yours was? No. Says you. She had a hit on the appetizer. It's really working for me. It's quite delicious. Really nice uh, flavor balance. Uh, where's the balsamic from? A bottle. Is it uh, North American? Is it European? Do you know? It's European. Oh, a European bottle. Well, that changes everything. A monkey could make it. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, the cracks are starting to show. She's got plumber's cleavage. Go, girl. It's our fourth night in Van City to find out who the West Coast can boast as the host with the most. And tonight, rough and tumble Rachel's got something to prove. You know that there's this crazy stereotype with plumbers, right? Which stereotype? Good with pipes. The plumber's crack. Oh, the plumber's plumber butt. butt. <laughs> plumber butt. Plumber butt. No, I don't have plumber's crack down there. Down okay. there. Here you do. <laughs> She's got plumber's cleavage. Go, girl. So, speaking of cleavage, me and Alessandro made it to your foyer downstairs and found uh, some... Boobs! <laughs> I don't want to say that. That is my body sculpted. As you do. It's so random. If you could get an area of your body plastered, what would you get done? I would probably plaster my ass. Ooh, <laughs> good for you. Really? It's my best quality. No comment. If I had to plaster something, it'd probably be my face. I have had my entire body plastered. I've had my chest plastered, my face, everything. Everything? 
He seems like the kind of guy that would be into weird like that. What about Alex? He should get his pipes done. <laughs> Which one? Pipes are done. Oh! <laughs> I said pipes, not pipe. Oh. <laughs> well, it could be considered a pipe as well. <laughs> I would buy a plaster cast of that. We all would. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Women say they don't like uh, the brainless, brawny men, and then they, what do they end up gravitating towards? Just saying. Maybe Rachel made a boo-boo when she chose to make risotto. It's not that risotto's time-consuming. It just has to be... Right. Ugh, don't you just hate that? People blowing their nose in public. I think that's horrendous. I would say that's on the top ten of my list, too, because uh, it's a very private moment. I blew my nose in front of both of you earlier. <laughs> that's why I brought this conversation up. Yeah, I know. Subtle Nav. He's over it. He's over me. My worst quality is probably just, like, continuously judging people. No. Young gay men. Judgmental. Ooh, what a surprise. My mind doesn't stop. Like, I may shut up, but my mind is speaking. On it. So I can't, I can't filter this in my mind. Like, I don't, that's probably my worst quality. It may not come across apparent, but it's internal. So it's judge us. Yeah, Nav, come on. You need to shut up. You need to eat more. <laughs> you need to drink less, and you need to loosen up. Oh! Nailed it. I talk too much. Hey, <laughs> at least I admit it. <laughs> and at least you don't talk to your food. I'm almost ready for stock. Okay. If you want to take stock of all of Rachel's recipes, go online at wnetwork.com. But be prepared, it might take a while. It's taking way longer than I expected. Um, this should be wrapped up here right away. I'm throwing these in now. Rachel adds her mushrooms and then parm from a bag. Grating cheese takes way too much time out of my life, and I don't do it anymore. Lazy Bones plates her risotto and chicken, and Fifty Shades of Grey is ready. Is everybody ready to eat? We are. So We're ready. starving. So starving. I love it. Glad someone does. The presentation consisted of a stick of thyme? Presentation was blah. There was no presentation. Tonight, I made for you mushroom risotto and a herb chicken that I hope complements very well. May I ask? what your broth was? My broth was homemade with actual bud mushrooms. Really? Really? Oh, keep your hair on. What you're actually eating for actual mushrooms are chanterelles and portobellos. See, it's fancy. I love the fact that you use chanterelles. Uh, I love the fact that you use portobello. And I love the fact that you took the time to make your own stock out of the mushrooms. But does Robin? It's, um, it's good. I like them. Tell the truth. It was like prison food. Which explains the leftovers. I no, am she's full. not about the I carbs. Am, I am full. Oh, you're a no-carb person? Sid! Oh, my God, Sid is such a diva. At my house, not only did you say you didn't, didn't eat carbs, you brought your own food! <laughs> Busted! I, I said I did not eat carbs. You're delusional. Awkward. <laughs> okay, gang, let's move on to the herb chicken, shall we? Who's herb? But umpa. The chicken just feels like it has this like, one-dimensional kind of herb flavor. Ah, what do you guys know? You're not from the old country. You know what, Rachel? Uh, you know, risotto for an Italian guy, um, I gotta say, um, you nailed it. It's cooked perfect. Wow, that's high praise from Mr. Italy. He was either himself or he's trying to Rachel. I want to know <laughs> what everybody thinks or says about you that is you first. Well, a lot of people think that I have fake breasts. Shocker. Those don't look real. My own doctor was doing a breast exam on me and asked if I had implants. <laughs> Which that I don't. weird. Oh, you don't? I don't. OK, I'll cross that off my list of questions. You were going to ask that? Of course. Oh, I think that there are people out there that think I'm a snooty bitch, but I really am not. Liar. I've had a lot of gay friends. Huh? I was in the uh, acting community for many years. I, I've, a I've had many, many close gay friends and still have. Why are you still talking? What was the question again? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm lost in translation because um, I, Sid, you just go on and on and on and on. <laughs> I was being nice. What is the have biggest you heard of that? What is the biggest misconception about of you? Oh, about me? That was the question. No misconception. Everybody thinks I talk too much, and I do. No way. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, it's rodeo time. Ride the bull. Ride the bull. Don't know what that means. 
It's the penultimate night of our week in vibrant Vancouver. And hoping she's the creme de la creme is Rachel, who's dishing up some finger-licking good ice cream. And it needs to be served damn cold. Rachel places her biscotti on top, and dessert is served to a resounding meh. Presentation was what it was. Which is? Biscotti with orange, cranberry, and white chocolate. For eating, not smelling. And in the bowl is vanilla bean ice cream, which I made myself. I gotta tell you, this is absolutely over the top fantastic. I love it. She nailed it. Unbelievable. The biscotti has everything a Christmas cake has and more to offer. Two words or less, Sid. Awesome. Attaboy. I don't know how to eat a biscotti. I don't get it. I'm not one. I'm just afraid of chipping my tooth, so I like try and stay away from like car like that. But this ice cream. I can drink it. <laughs> Ice cream was damn good. Very nice. Very well done. Robin is blown away. No, I wasn't blown away, but I wasn't disappointed. Not yet, but a game of one truth, one lie should take care of that. Yay! Guess which is which, and if you're wrong, you take a shot. I've never been to France, and I've never kissed a man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I think the lie is going to France. <laughs> Have a drink. Oh. <laughs> Nav's turn. I had a pet snake growing up, or my first relationship was with a woman. Ooh, which is the truth? I'm gonna say you had a pet snake as a child. You better take a shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nav likes the ladies, who knew? Tasted like blah. I played semi-professional soccer in Italy. I'd buy that. And I practice uh, Buddhism. <laughs> as if. Alessandro's a Buddhist? Wow. He's right. Now, I did not see that one coming. I am a certified diver. Or? I was a candidate in the uh, Miss Calgary Stampede. There's no way that's true. I'm going to say that you were not a candidate for the Miss Calgary Stampede. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Uptight Robin? She's full of... Calgary Stampede oh, girls are crazy yeah, yeah. girls. Yeah. She was a crazy girl. Takes one to know one. Yeah. Ride the bull! Ride the bull! Ride the bull! Ride the bull! Don't know what that means. It means Rachel's feeling no pain. Yes, it's a win. We'll see about that. I let loose on the water slide, but the food just didn't cut it. Seven. I hate to say it, but tonight was an eight. Eight is great. Rachel's water slide was heaven, but the party was a seven. So Rachel slips and slides into a 30-point tie with Nav, and there's only one night to go. I don't think I've never been surrounded by this many fools in this week. Give me the money. I want this so bad that I'd even go back and eat at Sid's house. Go big or go home. That's my analogy for tomorrow. On the next episode of Come Dine With Me, it's the final night. The guests are whining. Robin the wino. Cheers, Vancouver. As rigid Robin has a few wrinkles. Please shoot me now. <laughs> and lays it all on the line. Suck away. That's a party in my mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when we crown Vancouver's host with the most. I know I'm going to win this competition. Coming up... BC is the place to be. Welcome to Vancouver. It's our last night in British Columbia as a wannabe wine critic... Mwah. Cheers, Vancouver! ...takes her best shot. Woo! That's a party in my mouth. When Van City's top five battle it out for a $1,000 prize. Go big or go home. We've spent the week on the beautiful West Coast, known for its stunning vistas and world-class wineries. It's like California of the North. Hasta la vista, baby. What do you think? Mama's got some guns. I told my son, do not bring home a dumb girl because I will eat her up and spit her out. That's rich. Robin is a rich bitch. Sid, shut up. A good time. Which no one had on night one when chatty cable guy Sid hosted and scored 25 points. What can I say? How about congrats, Nav? Because the Punjabi party boy took the lead on night two with 30 points, leaving Sid in the dust. 
I'm fantastic. And he's also in second place because Guido Alessandro got 32 points despite a robin-shaped setback. I don't eat lamb. Because he proved you can make puff pastry from scratch. Italia rocks. His meal blew my mind. But Rowdy Rachel still tried to ratchet it up last night with a water slide ride. <laughs> That almost made up for her dried out chicken and mushroom risotto. Keyword, almost, because Rachel fell two points short and ended up tied with Nav. Perfect. Define perfect. A-type personality. You would say that. My husband tells me I have no filter. Shocker. I'm sick of Robin. She knows better than everyone. Robin needs to loosen up. I think she needs an enema. Can we talk about the wine cellar? What about it? I bet you we spend $10,000 a year in wine. And she's not scrimping tonight either, as Robin heads to the local butcher to pick up the main ingredient for her asabuco. Whatever the hell asabuco is. I'm going to bet my life it's not baby lamb. <laughs> Ooh, that's right, because Robin doesn't like to eat baby animals. I'm looking for some veal shank today. As in baby cow? I doubt it's a baby animal. It is. Robin made a big stink about me serving lamb, which is a baby animal, and here she is serving veal. Bloody hypocrite. This is pretty gross. Once it's out of the paper, it'll be fine. Props if she pulls it off. Robin dredges the shanks in flour and sears. Even though they're going to be a little slow braised, I want to just get a nice brown going on. Then Robin removes the veal, sautés mirepoix, and adds store-bought beef broth. Yes, store-bought beef broth. Leave it to the experts. Like Rachel? I made my own broth. They're going to be so in awe over the flavors, they won't care. Oh, yes, they will. Tonight, it's going to be a lot of this. Winer. And it's time for the wine, my favorite part of the entire recipe. Now, I'm not a big wine drinker, especially red wine. Well, Robin is. I don't even guess with the wine. I just pour. Well done, Robin. And we're good to go. Which means Robin can move on to her appetizer, crab cakes with chili lime cream sauce. She's probably going to use uh, not fresh crab. She better use fresh crab. She is. I bought my crab de -shelled. Sounds really good. Until you find out she's adding green onions to the crab meat. Are you serious? 100%. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, Robin. Everyone knows Sid hates onions. I really don't care if Sid doesn't like green onion, because that's what's going in the recipe. If you think Robin's crabby, tweet us using hashtag CDWMC. Looking good. And the crab cakes are about to get better as Robin adds lemon juice, Dijon mustard, panko breadcrumbs, and hot sauce. Just to give it a little zing. Robin pulses the ingredients together, forms her cakes, and moves on to dessert. Filo pastry cups with lemon cream. I love lemon cream. I like phyllo pastry. I'm hoping she made it herself. The phyllo? Come on. I'm going to let the experts make my phyllo dough. I made my own puff pastry. Touche. Robin butters her layers of phyllo, scores into squares, then... Gently mold them into the muffin tins. That's torture. But worth it once they're baked to a golden brown. They're like, um, what do they call that Chinese paper? Origami. Say that three times fast. Origami, origami, origami. Ha! And it's Japanese, by the way. Ha! <laughs> Next, Robin moves on to the lemon cream filling. So, cream cheese. You use the entire tub. Then a cup of yogurt, sugar, lemon zest, and mix. The filling is done. How does it taste? Mm -mm -mm. Yummy. Wow. Not wet yet. Failure is just not an option at this point. Her personality is what's going to fail her. Let the games begin. You're welcome, Vancouver. Be seeing y'all later. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Robin cranks up the heat. They're a little spicy for me. They're burning, burning. It's the last night of our week in beautiful British Columbia. Home to millions of laid-back, chilled-out Canadians and one uptight, tightly wound perfectionist. You know, it's all about perfection, right? Yep, all the way down to the obsessively folded napkins. And voila. Which means Robin can get changed and ready to greet her guests. I am so on top of my game. I am an hour ahead on the planning process. Good thing, because Party Boy Nav has arrived. Hi, you. Hello, my dear. How are you? Shocked. Robin looks super relaxed. Maybe it's the booze. Strawberry margaritas, are you interested? Hell yes, I'm interested. Margaritas at Anal Annie's house? Shocker. Oh, come on, you're lapping it up. 
Who do you not want to see again? One guess. I really don't want to see Sid again. Really? No. You don't want to see Sid? <laughs> and, and you? I think I agree with you. Then look away, because he's here. But at least he's brought along eye candy Alessandro. Two gorgeous men to look at. Uh, Come in, sir. please. Nice to see you. Do they have to? All week I've been dreading this. <laughs> Not as much as Alex. Could this possibly get any worse? Actually, it could. Salute. 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 Day five. Woo! Careful, Sid. Oh! Ah, oh, Sid, for crying out loud. Ooh, it spilled the drop on you. But spilling out of her top is next guest, robust Rachel. Oh, my God, you look amazing. Thank you. If not a tad morose. It's over. It's bittersweet. Game over. We're done. Not quite. Robin's night has just begun. So you've been busy, busy all day? I got done an hour early. Did you? Oh, yeah. I could have had a nap. Not what they want to hear. Brag away, lady. Brag away. Bull****. So, guys, it's the final night. We're going to find out who's going to win. It's the best of the West. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Let's go. A little bit of cheersies. A little bit of drinksies. Good. But will the same be said for the chili lime sauce? So we're going to do a quarter cup of white wine. Careful! Ooh, that's the last of the wine. Or is it? Whoa. Wow. Now this is awesome. You should have a beautiful wine cellar. It's fantastic. Robin the wino, clearly. Oh, no. This looks actually like a good place if her husband wants to get away from her. You just lock her up in here <laughs> with a wine opener. This woman loves her wine. And it's not like she's drinking the cheap stuff either. That's, I think that was even too expensive for me to touch. Nice to know someone respects their host's stuff. <laughs> we broke it. Just, oh, do you think we broke it? You're in trouble now. Whatever. Could this be? Chest of secrets. Ooh, what's in it? Handcuffs? Sex toys? What the? Oh, sheets. What the hell? How is this fun? This is a fitted sheet, dude. She's folded a fitted. I didn't even know you could do that. Perfectly folded fitted sheets? Are you kidding me? How OCD? She's a whole bunch of acronyms all rolled into one. Case in point, picture perfect crab cakes. Other than that one. I'm not happy with that one. It makes me mad. It's not perfect. If you don't want to get crusty making crab cakes, go to WNetwork.com for all of Robin's recipes. Robin plates her crab cakes on a bed of arugula, then taste test the sauce. I don't need to taste it. It's delicious. Robin's appetizer with a side of arrogance is ready to serve. Pardon my reach. Here, I'm sorry. sorry. No apologies needed. Trust me. Robin's presentation of her crab cakes was lovely. I can do that with one hand. And yet you didn't. So moving on. This is uh, crab cakes with a chili lime cream sauce. Yummy. Robin, girl, I've had many crab cakes before, and they've always sometimes they've tasted fishy. But this one does not taste like that. It tastes like the actual crab should taste. Whatever that means. These are fantastic. What kind of crab? Dungeness. I thought it might be. BC Waters. Right on. Beautiful. Caught it yourself? No, just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. She's not <laughs> laughing, Sid. It was a crab test. <laughs> They're a little spicy for me. Wimp. I'm like super sweating right now because I'm not used to spices. It's really good. You're Indian. My mouth was on fire. Oh, come on. It can't be that hot. I'm burning, burning. Hey, why is everybody being so picky? Robert is so anal. She doesn't like me. She is who she is. Which is a connoisseur. You have uh, my dream wine cellar downstairs. Oh, it's absolutely excellent. stunning. I she's love it. She's a wine cellar? Oh, yeah, she's a wine cellar, like a dungeon. Ooh, how impressive. I don't love pretension. So we bet on how many bottles were in there. I said 300 bottles. I said 275. Who's closest? There's actually just shy of 400 bottles in the what? cellar. I wish I had that money to spend on wine. I wish I had that money to spend on anything. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, Robin's three sheets to the wind. Worst party ever. Night's fallen in vibrant Vancouver, where there are thousands of restaurants and bars that are rocking seven nights a week. But sadly, we're here at Robin's, and it's all quiet on the western front. I think that they are having a good time. Think again. 
We were all really stiff and uncomfortable. We gotta figure out how to boost this party up for now. Yeah, you know what? We need to figure out how to boost this party up because honestly, I'm starting to get bored. Yeah, right? let's get something right? going. Raise the roof. He's not joining in, Sid. I don't think Nav likes me. You're right. Why did I have to sit beside Sid? Because Robin made your bed and now you have to lie in it. Your bed is so comfortable. Oh, you had a little nap, did you? Well, I mean, I, me and Sid took a little sp leap. A leap, I knew a leap it. onto your bed. Were you bouncing on my bed? Is that what I heard in my kitchen? No, no, no. Cut it out, Sid. Sid's purpose is to become Canada's most annoying person. But we open the chest and lo and behold, they're just folded sheets. Wah, wah. Not just any folded sheets. You could cut yourselves in the corners and I have never in my life seen folded fitted sheets. Perfectly Perfect. folded. This is so interesting. I'm at a party. Could have fooled me. <laughs> oh my god. I want to learn how to do it. You want me to fold sheets right now? Please no. Damn right. Fold the sheet. Fold, fold, fold the sheet. 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 You asked for it. Pop it. Fold it over. Oh. This is a nightmare. <laughs> do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to stab myself in the eye. Uh, oh, excuse me. We're still talking about laundry? Oh, yes, we are. Fold it over. Turn it over. Yay, it's over. Hey, it looks awesome. Did that just happen? Yes, and now it's happening with Sid. Corners. Having fun, Nav? Keep it separate. You've already done it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God, this must be the worst party ever. I cannot believe that sheets. you can't fold a fitted sheet. Ooh. <laughs> Look, you did it. Yay, Sid! I am the ghost of fitted sheets! Yeah. The ghost of Sid. Ugh, even as a ghost, Sid talks too much. Sid is totally the village idiot. But Robin's no fool when it comes to making risotto. I've never ruined risotto. Never? Not even from the first time I made it. Not even for a second? Not for a second. And how's your Asabuco record? Have not looked at the Osobuco in a while. I guess I probably should. I don't know what the hell Oso Osobuco is. The Osobuco is a baby cow. Mm. A baby cow? That's it's real. When real. The fact that she wouldn't eat a baby lamb the other night, she's going to serve us a baby cow? Right? Hip, hip, hypocrisy. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Robin adds Parmesan cheese and cream to her risotto, and then... I'm ready to serve. I'm rocking. Robin plates the risotto and the oh-so-tender veal. I'm having difficulty getting it out of the pot because it is so tender. Robin adds string beans and... I'm ready to go. Let's go. Come on. Coming. Robin's main course is ready to serve. Here we go. Oh, yay. Hey, everyone. Ooh, wow. Thank you. The presentation was really nice. I like the square plate. Yeah, well, Robin didn't make those. So, enjoy. Your braised baby cow with mushroom risotto. Your risotto is really, really, really yummy. It matches really nicely with the veal. But you don't like eating babies. I did enjoy the flavor of it. Glad someone did. For me, I don't get the meat. What's not to get? You wouldn't allow lamb on your plate uh, the other night, and, and I'm just wondering, if was it because it was baby animal? No. It was because you don't like lamb. I don't like the smell. I don't like the texture of lamb. See? She's not a hypocrite. Give me a break. <laughs> okay, then tell her what you really think, Alex. I dare you. The flavor is fantastic. I think you totally nailed this. Nice way to chicken out, bro. I'm a Buddhist. I'm not going to slam her. Sid will. Is the wine corked? As in bad? The horror. This is an Italian frescobaldi. It's that that's not acidic. corked. It's just acidic. It's more acidic. Oh, so it's supposed to taste like poop. That was some bitter ass red wine. Hey, I'm no wine connoisseur. I'll drink it. Classy with a K. Robin, you know what? When I met you, uh, you're very classy. And now? I feel that like you have a lot to offer me what I'm lacking in my life. Oh my God, I'm about to cry. Oh I, am so, I am so about to cry. Aw, Robin and Nav, BFFs. You can have her. Who's not gonna fall in love with Nav? Come on, seriously. Uh, I mean, immediate bromance with Nav. Oh, please. Oh, I love this guy. You're hilarious. Don't stop. <laughs> it's true, it's all true. I mean, seriously, I have a crush on you. I was like, 
And what about Sid? Yeah, I mean, my first impression was that you're an awesome guy and then you seem entertaining. Liar. My actual first impression was that this guy's annoying. Or crazy. <laughs> well, you know what? You need a little crazy in your life every once in a while. Speaking of which... Shot, 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 shots. No, we're not doing any shots. Not even one? No shots. Shot, 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 shots. You tell her, Al. Robin. What's up, guys? How are you? Looking for hugs, what else? I would have gotten a smack across the ear and told to go sit down and shut the hell up. Maybe we could pick up this party a little bit, maybe get a couple of shots going. We're kind of lacking in like the fun, clearly. So bring on the tequila. You want to do shots? Yes! You're going to do it my way. With lots of rules and pretension? We're going to do body shots. <laughs> Where was this Robin the past four nights? She certainly wasn't lying on the table pulling her top up. Body shot! Body shot! shot, shot. All right, here we go. Oh. Yeah. Suck away! <laughs> now this is a party. Sheet pulling party. Body shots. As you do. Salt is next. Salt is yeah, yeah. Whoa, Robin, there's no tequila on there. I've never been touched by a 49-year-old woman like that before. One good turn deserves another. Shut, shut, shut. Slurp. Wow, you wow. are good at that. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. I really wanted a body shot of, of Alessandro. He's a little busy One, at the moo. Three. <laughs> shut, shut, go, go, go. Right about now, my wife is uh, probably getting in touch with her lawyer. <laughs> Double shot. Nobody asked me to lie down. I would have done it. We know, Sid. We know. They should be giving me tens across the board. Coming up on Come Dine With Me, who will be the West Coast host with the most? We're about to say so long to Van City, party capital of Canada, where Robin is working on her final masterpiece, Filo Pastry Cups with lemon cream filling and fresh strawberries, otherwise known as... Dessert. Wow. Wow. Presentation was... Um, absolutely adequate. Such high praise. So, bon appetit. And dig into the final dish of West Coast Week. I love the lemon. Just the right tartness. Uh, did you add any sugar to the strawberries? Uh, no, I added sugar to the lemon cream filling. Yep. But it was a very small amount. Yes. And yogurt. Yogurt? What the f*** is yogurt? Ah, who cares? It's all about the pastry. Can you tell me about your your filo? Uh, I stalling. Did you roll it out? Did you did you buy it? Did no, you... I I I rely on the experts for my filo pastry. Yeah. So in other words, store bought. I prefer something that is actually handmade by someone. Ouch. The dessert I thought was really fulfilling. You really nailed this dessert. It's fantastic. So a great end to the night. The night's not over yet. What? We have to stay here longer. I have a surprise for you. Follow me to the backyard. Ooh, a surprise. Oh, great. Another wine pairing? Nope. Great, we're going to steam curtains. Awesome. But it's actually live music. Come down with me. <laughs> My meals are more than fine. Come down with me. It's well worth your time. Shake it, Sid. Come dine with me, da -da -da -da. I'm gonna give you da -da -da, some good eats. Da -da -da -da. Now the meal is done and the time has come to judge. Mm, yeah. The song was great. And we Aunt, I want that money. And she'll get it too if she scores a 33 or better. So bring on the moolah. This is it. Yeah! This is the moment we've all been waiting for all week. I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. <laughs> the pipes are ready. Show me the money. If I lose, I hope it's to the right person. I should win because I was a genuine host. If Sid wins, I'll eat his hat. In last place... Is Sid. Yay, Sid! Yay, Sid! In third place, 
is Robin. <laughs> Tied for second is Rachel and Nav. Oh, oh my God. And the winner is So much for sportsmanship. So in the end, the Italian Stallion trampled Ms. High Horse. Tonight, Robin fell a little short of the mark. Seven. The food didn't do it for me. Seven. I'm scoring Robin an eight. I'm going to give Robin a seven. Let's go party! I'm the man. This is mine. I would do this all over again in a heartbeat. I had the best time ever. I'm, I'm absolutely gutted. I'm going to shed a tear for the first time in my life because I cannot believe I didn't win. <sighs> it happens. Vancouver! 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 Vancouver!